bullshit marketing firm. How many times have you heard or said that phrase? It's the Cadillac of insert name or service. You probably have, without even thinking about it, to make a point about top tier quality or the prestige of something. But when you stop and think about it, is Cadillac still a good gauge of superiority? Back in the glory days of the American auto industry, the 1950s, 1960s, and into the early 1990s, this cliche was true. A Cadillac was the ultimate marker of greatness. But in 2020, that's not really the case. And part of this decline in Cadillac's reputation can be credited to a variety of reasons, from failing to innovate, to struggles with quality, and earning the unfortunate label of a, quote, grandpa brand, to name a few. To this day, Cadillac is still working to regain its footing as a luxury car brand. But before we can get to their latest marketing play, let's first investigate some of the highlights of the brand's history. At one point in time, owning a Cadillac was a status symbol. If you pulled up in one, people noticed. The power of their emblem and brand became synonymous with achievement and success. But as I said, now not so much. It all started when the car industry began to see a rise in imports in the 1970s and 80s, and Cadillac began to feel the heat. German and Japanese cars were providing consumers with the bells and whistles they never knew they even wanted or needed. In an effort to combat the competition, Cadillac decided to downsize some of their fleet of vehicles to create a line of fuel-efficient cars. That's one of those things that was great in theory, but in practice, hmm. On the surface, it looked like Cadillac had their ear to the market and was making moves to accommodate the consumer's needs and compete with their competitors. In reality, most of these cars were strikingly similar to the cars from the other General Motors brands, not to mention these cars failed in the quality and performance department when compared to the imports. Sure, the cars were okay, but when you're paying a premium for a vehicle that you perceive to be luxury, is okay going to cut it? And if you have a luxury vehicle, the person buying it might not be as conscious of the miles per gallon as someone that wanted that smaller car at that time. The market answered with a resounding no, and the brand took a hit. Of course, over the years, like most brands, there were ebbs and flows with success and failure, but with every new innovation from their competition and their inability to deliver a quality vehicle that matched the price tag, Cadillac's value proposition and perception continued to diminish. Quote, a brand is the set of expectations, memories, stories, and relationships that, taken together, account for a consumer's decision to choose one product or service over another. End quote. Seth Godin. A brand's the set of expectations, memories, stories, and relationships that taken together account for a consumer's decision to choose one product or service over another. That brand means so much and so many things build that brand to make you feel a certain way. We buy based on emotion and then use analytics to support our decision. Consumer perception can make or break a brand, and in Cadillac's case, their inability to live up to their prestigious name played a significant role in their decline and the shift in consumers steering away from viewing their cars as luxury vehicles. Memories of a once sought after brand can only take a company so far and their reliance on the past hurt their ability to market to future generations of car buyers. This was evident in the 1990s and still holds fairly true today as Cadillac continues to struggle with appealing to the younger market. Throughout the years, there's even been a running joke that all Cadillac owners were in this target demo, quote, somewhere between 60 and death. That's your target market segmentation. <laughs> it became known as a grandpa car and was welcomed with open arms by Buick, another brand that's synonymous with the stereotype. Lucky for Cadillac, they saved themselves from a full-on implosion in 1998-1999 with the introduction of the Escalade 
a luxury SUV that met and exceeded the needs of the consumer's SUV craze at the time. Although certainly beneficial, the Escalade was nothing more than a quick jump to a dying battery. Cadillac still needed to find a way to build brand awareness with younger generations, so they turned to some of Hollywood's finest looking for celebrity endorsements. Just like any car brand, Cadillac looked to these celebrities to breathe new life into their marketing efforts and sales. Over the years, Cadillacs included Brad Pitt and Eminem in their commercials. Pop stars like Lord sang about driving Cadillacs in our dreams in her hit song. Royals and big-name celebrities like Justin Bieber and David Beckham were and maybe still are driving around in Escalades. All of these moving parts worked together to revamp Cadillac's image in an attempt to appeal to younger consumers and reestablish their popularity and perception of Cadillac's prestige. Unfortunately, stamps of approval from well-known celebrities only take you so far when the quality doesn't match the price. Now Cadillac's new chief marketing officer is trying to position Cadillac again as a prestigious brand. But just because you say something is prestigious doesn't mean the market believes it actually is. To truly become a prestigious brand, again, the quality of their vehicles have to match or exceed other well-known luxury brands on the road. I think this new positioning is not going to work and clings to the brand's impressive beginnings. Cadillac is trying to sell a high-priced, quote, okay vehicle by creating an illusion that the brand still evokes a sense of luxury. Even though an entire generation has grown up not even knowing why they reference a Cadillac at all when describing something of value and stature, it likely won't get them to put two and two together and purchase one when they see brands like Tesla, Mercedes, BMW, etc. producing high-tech, high-quality vehicles. This idea of aligning your messaging with the quality of your product isn't just a lesson for Cadillac to abide by. Brands, no matter the size, need to back their brand promise with quality and deliver across all fronts because words, stories, brands, and perception all matter in the end. Thanks for listening to another edition of the No BS Marketing Show recorded in our studios in bold, beautiful downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Remember, ask yourself, what's the big idea? And build your story around the answer. It's all about bold solutions, no BS.